Isa ang tuberculosis o TB sa mga itinuturing ng Department of Health na major cause ng mortality dito sa Pilipinas. At noong nakaraang taon, isa ang Pilipinas sa tatlong pung bansa na may mataas pa rin ng incidence ng TB. Kaya naman ang ating mga eksperto ay pinag-aralan na rin ang aspeto ng economics pagdating sa issue ng TB. Ating tutukan ang sakit na TB. Dito lang sa DOS TV, Science for the People. Mahirap isipin na sa kabila ng mga libreng gamot hatid ng ating pamahalaan, marami pa rin ang hindi nakakatanggap nito dahil ang iba sa atin hindi nadadiagnose ng maaga. Ang iba naman ay hindi makapunta sa mga diagnostic centers dahil sa kondisyon na kanilang mga buhay. Pero ano nga ba ang lagay ng Pilipinas pagdating sa sakit na ito? Well, there's good news and bad news in the uh status of the Philippine tuberculosis problem. Uh, there was a recent survey done, uh, conducted over 2016 and actually was presented last year, 2017. It showed there's not been a significant decline in the TB problem as far as new cases are concerned. And uh, one of the reasons is because they employed a new method of diagnosing which was more accurate than those previously done. We have done these surveys over the last uh, uh, two, three decades already. And so the bad news is there has not been any decline in the what we call bacteriologically confirmed TB. But the uh, good news is if you look at the WHO latest report on tuberculosis for the Philippines, the mortality is really falling. In fact, uh, we achieved the goal of the Millennium Development Goal of trying to hack mortality. So there's good and bad news. And I guess it's a wake-up call uh, we also had some information from the WHO officer that we actually now rank number four in terms of uh, at, uh, TB worldwide, and that's also in total numbers, and number five for multidrug-resistant tuberculosis. So it's a call to arms to do something about TB in the country. Multidrug-resistant TB is defined as uh, a patient who is resistant to the two most powerful and common drugs we use, rifampicin and INH. So normally you treat TB for six months, but for MDR, uh, in the conventional treatment, you can go from 18 months to 24 months. There is now a new regimen, the nine months regimen, but it's still in its early phase. So MDR TB is more complicated to treat. It has more drugs, so you have more side effects and the mortality is higher and uh, it causes more illness or morbidity. Kung ang susi sa TB ay agarang gamot, kailangan natin ng mga makabagong paraan upang mapabilis at mas maging accurate ang pagdiagnose ng sakit na TB. Ito man ay multidrug resistant o drug sensitive TB. There's been a lot and there's been a lot of studies on the stigma on TB. For example, the use of utensils. People think that if you have TB, then itatabi mo na lahat ng makubiatos. That's not true. That doesn't work. Okay? Uh, the cough etiquette, uh, it not, in fact, they're not advocating. If you cough, you can actually use this to cover your, your mouth. So there's a lot of misconceptions that it's it's a con it can be inherited from father to son, and that's not true. Okay? So we hear a lot of that. The sad thing is, after 30 years of practice, I still hear those stories. No? And uh, it, it, in fact, there's even a story that I continuously share. It's not uh, a figment of my imagination. Uh, the stigma of TB is so bad that um, 
many many years ago a patient i told i told him it's not tb but it's cancer you know he, he actually said he said ay salamat cancer at hindi tb so that's how bad the stigma is uh, translated it, it was because if he was labeled to have tb he would be a social outcast or she would be a social outcast i also know someone from a prominent family in one of the cities at the least that he, he he didn't reveal he had she had mdr tb this was 20 years ago so the stigma is really so bad okay and it's happening again in hiv so we need to tell people that tb is not like uh is 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 not a curse uh, uh, it is something that can be cured but you have to consult uh, the proper way. Uh, there are two ways to get TB. Ang medyo popular na notion is pag umubo yung isang may sakit at nakahawaan ka na nasagap mo yung droplet, then pupunta sa'yo at ikaw na yung magkaka-TB. Isa yun, no pero depende yun sa resistance mo, yung environment, kung nakatira kayo sa isang kwarto lang. But uh, another source of TB is nagkaroon ka nung bata ka as primary complex. Yun yung popular na primary complex na mostly piniprevent ng BCG. Tapos, nung tumanda ka, yung same primary complex gumising uli for some reason na under, un, until now, not fully understood. Pag yun gumising uli, hindi mo kailangan ng tagahawa sa'yo. Sarili mo yun. Na gumising siya dahil pinabaya mo yung katawan mo at nagkaroon uli ng adult onset na TB. Yun yung dalawang klasing TB. Ang alam na ng mga tao yung pag inubo at mahawa ka. Pero marami hindi na realize na pwede ka magka-TB sa sarili mo lang. Huwag mong sisihin yung nasa paligid mo. Kasi yung TB mo, yung TB nung bata ka. Payo ng mga eksperto, hindi makakatulong ang maling impormasyon at makalumang paniniwala. Kaya huwag katakutan o panindirihan ang mga taong may sakit na TB dahil maliban sa ito ay nagagamot, ang sakit na ito ay hindi basta-basta nakakahawa. Ang TB ay nagagamot, subalit paano nga ba natin magagamot ang isang bagay na hindi pa naman nadadiagnose sa isang pasyente? Mahalaga na matukoy ng maaga kung ang isang tao ay may TB para sa nararapat na medikasyon. Epektibo pa ba ang mga kagamitan at pamamaraan ng ating bansa para sa pagdiagnose ng TB? Well, uh, the, the DOST, particularly the PCHRD, partnered with the um, Medical Research Council of the United Kingdom so the idea was, and in this was in the area of health, how, what if we have an exchange of uh, the, some of the best scientists on both sides, uh, from Europe to the Philippines, particularly the United Kingdom. So they said, uh, why don't you bid for some projects? And they identified TB as one of the infectious uh, uh, diseases that had to be done. Uh, the message from the national survey is we cannot do business as usual. If we continue to do what we do before, we will not be able to control and eliminate TB. So we need, and uh, I've been working on TB for the last 30 years, we need uh, fresh ideas. So this is a great idea that why don't we use economics modeling to further guide policy on using the the diagnostics to help uh, control TB, for example. For a long time, the drugs for TB are free. But even if you have free drugs at the rural health units, it doesn't mean the patients will come and consult. Kaya minabuting pag-aralan ng mga eksperto mula Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine ng UK at ng De La Salle Health Science Institute ang pagkakaiba ng mga teknolohiyang magagamit sa pagdiagnose sa TB. Pinondohan ng Philippine Council for Health, Research and Development o DOST-PCHRD ang nasabing pag-aaral na sa ilalim ng Impact Assessment of Diagnostic Algorithms and Tools for Multidrug Resistant or MDRTB and Drug Sensitive Tuberculosis in the Philippines Project. Um, I'm 
from the United Kingdom, which is where I'm based now. My undergraduate degree was in mathematics. This was quite a while ago now. And then I worked for a little while as a risk modeler. Uh, following this, I uh, went back to university and did my MSc, my master's in health economics. And currently I'm working at the School of Tropical Medicine in Liverpool um, as a health economist and an operational modeler. So the objective of the project, I suppose broadly speaking, is to equip researchers here in the Philippines with a strategy to project the impacts of different diagnostic technologies for diagnosing uh, both drug susceptible and multi-drug resistance uh, tuberculosis here in the Philippines. There's three main uh, kind of objectives that we're looking at. So the first of these is to build this computerized model, a virtual implementation model as we call it, um, which is essentially this mathematical model which will take lots of primary data which we've collected ourselves from Cavite province and we want to build this model um, but the model itself is built around the patient pathways and what we mean by patient pathways this is the the journey a patient goes on from right from the onset of their symptoms or from um, a chest x-ray for a pre-employment screening for example which shows a, a shadow and so right the way from the start of their journey um, all the way up to the point at which they receive their diagnosis and they start treatment we call this whole process the patient pathway so our model is based around this patient pathway so that's the first objective to to build this model the second objective is to use the model itself um, to project kind of and evaluate the effects of different diagnostic strategies so using different diagnostic tools in different orders um, we want to project what the impact will be if these are rolled out um, across the province. The third kind of strategy, sorry, the third objective that we're looking at, kind of right the way from the beginning of the project, one of its main points of emphasis has been on building capacity, modeling capacity here in the Philippines. Traditionally, tuberculosis for a long time now has been diagnosed using uh, a microscope, so what we call microscopy. So if you are someone who we're um, interested, do you have tuberculosis, you will provide us with a sample, a sputum sample, which you, so you cough up this sample, we take it, um, and then in the laboratory, kind of, we would stain it and prepare it and then look at it under a microscope to see if we could see the TB actually in the sample. Now this is a, it has advantages in that it's, it's pretty cheap to do. It costs less than 100 peso per test for all the equipment, etc. But it's not always, you're not always going to find the tuberculosis. So maybe about 60% of the time we'll be able to spot if you have tuberculosis from looking at this sample. If the results come back negative, then a clinician will have to make decisions based upon other kind of uh, other information that they have available. So this is how tuberculosis diagnosis has been done for a long time. Um, also using an x-ray, so that's a, a chest x-ray. So you get a chest x-ray done and then a radiologist or better yet, a, a kind of a team of specialists will look at this x-ray and then make a decision based upon kind of exactly what the image shows about whether you have tuberculosis or not. Again, this has some advantages. Um, if you do have TB, it's very likely to pick it up, but it's not entirely specific, as we would say. So often, kind of the shadows that you might see on the X-ray or the abnormalities, it's not exactly clear whether this is tuberculosis or whether this is something else. So this is a, a technology which has been available uh, for about a decade now. In 2010, the WHO, the World Health Organization, endorsed it for TB diagnostics. And uh, so this machine itself, it's about the size of I suppose, a coffee machine and it can fit on the table. Um, it has a number of cartridges that you can put in. So again, you take the sample from the patient, uh, you put it in a little tube, you put it into a cartridge, which is about this size, you put it into the machine, and then you yourself, you, know, you press the go button and you can go make yourself a cup of coffee. Within two hours, you can come back and it will have a result for you. Either this patient has tuberculosis or no, they don't. One of the real advantages of this machine, because of the way it works at a, a DNA level, so it works right the way down and kind of um, it breaks down the DNA, replicates it, etc. But because it's able to actually look at the structure of the genes, it's able to tell us whether this patient has resistance to the frontline drugs that we use. So I mentioned earlier we're looking at both drug susceptible, TB, which is what people commonly think of as TB, but also multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. Now this is tuberculosis which is resistant to the two frontline drugs that we use for treating TB, that's isoniazid and rifampicin. Now this machine, the gene expert, is able to tell us um, most commonly if somebody is resistant to rifampicin. So what we can do then is we can ensure that the patient themselves get started on a regimen of treatment which is appropriate for them. 
So in the past with microscopy, when we're diagnosing people with a microscope, it doesn't tell us this information, so you may very well start a patient off on treatment. Sa pinag-aaralang i-roll out na gene expert, hindi lang mas mabilis at madali ang pagtukoy kung ang isang pasyente ay may TB o wala. Hindi na kailangan ng ilang oras na paghihintay at hindi na rin gaano kailangan ng X-ray. Well, uh, the National TB Program has now embarked on deploying the new, we call them tools, which is the gene expert, which utilizes the same specimen, usually the sputum. But for the longest time, we have been using microscopy, uh, and sometimes this is not uh, this not detect these patients because I mean, up to 50% or more are negative under the the microscopy test of the AFB. If you use the X-ray, which is uh, one of the things that they use to kind of screen some patients anyway, that the pickup rate is also very the sensitivity we call it is high. But if their true TB is not exactly always uh, correct. So with the deployment of these tools, the latest data I've seen is up to 30% are now using expert in the public side of the TB control program. Then we hope to increase the number of patients being detected. But again, there's still a lot of people not seeking consult or are consulting the private sector where the gene expert is still not widely available. It's very expensive to treat one case. So we will have to pour a lot of money in TB control, buying the new diagnostics, deploying them properly, and more than that, you can deploy them everywhere. But if you don't have the LGUs and the OH supporting the staff, then this equipment will not be used. That's another thing we saw in the projects. Many of the, the experts, you can have them given for free, but you have to convince the mayor to have a staff run it and properly train it. So that's another thing that needs to be done. So we have to support our legislators to lobby more for more funding for TB. We're very happy the OSTPCHRD is, uh, is really pouring a lot of resources, but uh, the government cannot do it alone, and even the private sector cannot do it alone. Well, we work through our Fil the Philippine Coalition Against TB. Uh, LaSalle has been an uh, active partner there. So we usually work uh, as a coalition of groups not LaSalle itself. We have some graduates who actually are working within the staff of the Senate. But, uh, and some of the outstanding researchers in the country are alumni of our, of our school you know, in different parts of uh, the country. So uh, LaSalle alone uh, needs to work with other stakeholders. And the uh, societies are also very active. The chess, I used to be the president of the chess physicians until a few weeks ago. So we're, TB is at the top of our, our priorities. So TB needs to be um, felt by the people to be a major problem, but we need to convince media like you that it, is a, it has to be sexy, it has to be presented in a sexier way. People think TB is the disease of somebody else. It's the disease of the poor. They don't know it also hits doctors, it hits actors. For a long time, it has been hitting many very creative people. As long as when people feel that they are also at risk, then maybe we can get their attention. In behalf of our partners with Liverpool and De La Salle, uh, we have been greatly privileged by being involved in this three-year project. Uh, we would like to use this, um, I guess, this media exposure to explain to our people na ang TB ay isang sakit na major problem pa rin sa Pilipinas. At dapat magpatingin yung mga pasyente o kung may duda sila na meron silang posibilidad ng sakit, ay kumonsulta sila sa center nila o sa doktor nila. Itong project na to ay tutulong sa DOH para mas maintindihan nating lahat through a partnership kung paano natin i-deploy yung bagong test. Pero yung bagong test na ito ay hindi perfect kasi sputum pa rin ginagamit niya. Maraming pasyente walang nararamdaman. Pero para magamit ng tama itong mga bagong test, ang mga test na ito ay masasayang lang kung hindi naman pupunta yung mga tao para gamitin itong test. At sa maraming lugar, libre ito. So we need that and then pag na-diagnose, dapat inumin yung gamot hanggang matapos. So we would like to appeal to our people na uh, to, if you want to have a healthy life, consult early. Uh, if you want to have to prevent TV, you should uh, maintain your health 
uh, get as much sleep as you can, huwag niyong abusuhin yung katawan niyo with sigarilyo at saka alak, huwag kasyado magpupuyat, at kung meron kayong mga ibang sakit, nulad ng diabetes, at kung ano-ano pa, pagamot kayo. So, this project is just a tool, but I would encourage government to have more of these projects, or even to continue this project, kasi hindi pa tapos ang gera. Kung baga gera sa TB, hindi pa tapos ang gera. Good morning, Sir Jel. Good morning din po sa lahat ng tagasuwebay ng GSTB. May panibagong bagyo ang ating binabantayan na sa labas ito ng ating Philippine Area of Responsibility. Ang bagyong na may international name, Congre. Kasalukuyan, ang layo ng bagyo ay nasa 1,565 kilometers silangan ng Southern Luzon. Ang lakas ng hangin ng bagyong ito ay umaabot sa 130 kilometers per hour samantalang ang pagbukso ng hangin ay umaabot sa 160 kilometers per hour. Kapag napalantil ang pagkilis nito, inasa po natin papasok sa PAR o Philippine Area of Responsibility ngayong hapon at tatawagin ay Bagyong Quini. Kasalukuyan, ang bagyong ito ay walang epekto sa ating bansa. At naman ang uh, forecast track ni Bagyong na magiging Queenie. Itong uh, magiging track ni Bagyong uh, magiging Queenie ay katulad ng uh, track ni Bagyong Paeng. Kung saan bababayin itong uh, uh, area nito sa, uh, sa karagatan at mababang tsansa na maglalanpol sa almang bahagi ng bansa. At syempre, inaasang po natin lalakas itong uh, bagyo habang binababay itong uh, ating karagatan. At kapag ang panatili ang kanyang uh, kilos, maaari po sa Webes o Biernes, inaasahan po natin lalabas ng par, itong uh, bagyong uh, inaasahan natin na uh, magiging Queenie. Unang araw ng October, ano bang inaasahan natin na uh, uh, track ng bagyo at ilang bagyo ba inaasahan natin? Base sa historical data, ang mga bagyong uh, pumasok sa par, karamihan po ay dumadaan sa bansa, lalo na po sa Luzon at ganun din sa Visayas. At meron din pong uh, track ng bagyo o pagkilos ng bagyo na lumilihis o lumihis at hanggang sa paglabas ng uh, Philippine Area of Responsibility. Sa buwan nito, inaasahan po natin ng dalawa o tatlong bagyo na uh, inaasahan po natin na uh, papasok sa Philippine Area of Responsibility. Para naman sa lagay na panahon, itong uh, Bicol region ay inaasahan po natin na magiging maulap na kalangitan na may mga kalat-kalat na pag-ulan at thunderstorm. Samantala, ang nalabing bahagi ng Luzon kasama Metro Manila ay magiging maganda panahon maliban sa mga localized thunderstorm. Ang inaasahan po natin na agwat ng temperatura sa Metro Manila ay mula 25 hanggang 32 degrees Celsius. Sa Tagaytay, 20 hanggang 29 degrees Celsius. Sa Puerto Princesa City, 25 hanggang 32 degrees Celsius. Doon naman si Ligaspi, dahil inaasahan po natin ng maulap na kalangitan, ay inaasahan po natin mainit o mataas ang temperatura na aabot ng 33 degrees Celsius. Sa Tagaytay City, inaasahan po natin na aabot ng 35 degrees Celsius. Doon naman sa Dawag, ay uh, 23 hanggang 31 degrees Celsius at sa Baguio, 16 hanggang 24 degrees Celsius. Tango na tayo sa Visayas at Mindanao. Itong Eastern Visayas ay magiging uh, maulap pa rin ang kalakitan na may mga kalat-kalat na pag-ulan at thunderstorm. Samantala, ito na labing bahagi ng uh, Visayas at yung buong Mindanao ay uh, magandang panahon ang inasang po natin maliban sa mga localized thunderstorm sa hapon o gabi. 
25 hanggang 33 degrees Celsius ang inaasahan po natin sa Tacloban, sa Cebu 26 hanggang 32 degrees Celsius, sa Rio Ilo 26 hanggang 31 degrees Celsius. Ma may tapano ang inaasahan po natin 24 hanggang 34 degrees Celsius sa Cagayan de Oro, sa Davao 26 hanggang 33 degrees Celsius at sa Zamboanga 24 hanggang 33 degrees Celsius. Minasan pa rin tayong uh, maalon hanggang sa napakaalon ating mga karagatan sa mga baybayin dagat. Ang mga lugar po na maapektuhan ma ma ito ay sa Batanes, sa Kalayan, Babuyan at itong Northern Coast ng Ilocos Norte at Cagayan. Kaya palal po sa ating mga kababayan sa mga uh, lugar na aking nabanggit na huwag mo nang pumalaot dahil sa patataas ng alon na inaasang po natin sa mga lugar nito. Sa extended weather outlook, patuloy magiging magandang panahon maliban sa localized thunderstorm ay po natin sa Metro Manila. Ganun din ang inaasa po natin sa Baguio City. Pero sa Ligaspi City, bukas patuloy magiging maulap na kanangitan na may mga kalat-kalat na pag-ulan at thunderstorm. Dako naman tayo sa Metro Cebu at Metro Dabao ay patuloy na magiging magandang panahon maliban sa mga localized thunderstorm sa hapon o gabi. Kanina po ay ang araw sumikat sa ganap na 5.46 ng umaga at mamayang hapon inaasa po natin ang araw lubog sa ganap na 5.46 ng hapon. Mula sa pag-asa, ako po si Alzar D. Aurelio. DOS TV would like to thank Filipino Creazione de Mano Incorporated. Visit their showroom at Ground Floor Lobby, PSMBFI Building. 318 Santon Road, West Crame, San Juan City. SITAV, the world's leading source of reliable and authoritative news, views, and analysis on information about science and technology for global development. Visit their website at www.sitev.net. Isa lamang ito sa hakbangin ng ating pamahalaan upang matugunan ang tumataas na bilang ng namamatay dahil sa TB. Maliban sa gamot, early detection ang sagot. Kaya naman ang DOST buong suporta sa layuni ng DOH na mabawasan ang bilang ng namamatay sa sakit na TB. At paalala ng mga eksperto, alagaan ang sarili para hindi kapitan ng sakit na TB. Ako po si Jel Miranda. Ito ang DOS-TV, Science for the People.